business, leadership, and loss. There's something I've always had as kind of a pet peeve about business, especially in the Western world, which is we don't stop to celebrate the successes we have. That's one side of the pendulum. The other side is just as true. We don't stop to mourn our losses. We don't stop to take the time to heal with the losses that come with business. You can have a bad year, so profitability is down, which might mean promotions don't happen and bonuses don't happen and raises don't happen. And the feeling of success and thriving might not happen. That creates an experience of loss. Say a sales pitch, you're vying for a big project and another company gets the project. You don't get awarded that or an individual who gets passed up on a promotion or take steps for visibility and never landed on the radar. The thing about Western culture is we are a business as usual culture. We just keep working, just show up like it's normal. Everything's normal, situation normal, but people are dealing with loss. I learned a lot about how to lead loss, about how to be a leader that knows how to work with team and team member loss. I learned it from my own staff. I have an incredible team of people and I was facing something pretty tough and I had some loss in my life and my team members taught me a lot. They, they really did three amazing things for me in my difficult moment. The first thing that they did is they checked in on me with empathy. They made sure that I knew they cared and that my issues were on the radar, my loss, what I was struggling with was something they cared about. The second thing that they did so expertly well was they created space for me to talk about it. They invited me to share, to express myself, and it gave me a, an outlet, which think about the working world, you don't usually get that. That's where you stay quiet about things and go on as if everything's normal. But they pulled it out. But the third thing that I was most impressed with is they kept me working in my meaningful space. So you sometimes, when someone's suffering, you get the idea that what you should do is give them time off. Well, what they did was better than that. They kept me on task inside the meaningful work that makes me feel purposeful, where I get to contribute and feel relevant. However, they did it in a way that cut me some slack. My work, just like your work, is filled with so many details, inundated with tedious tasks. And what they would do is create space for me, a little more wiggle room, a little bit more room to breathe, but not take away my purpose and meaning and value. So I'm translating that to my leadership concept. Leading of loss really is doing those three things that my exceptional Sage Presence team did for me. One, as a leader, you're going to reach out to your teams when you know that they're having a loss and you're going to make sure they know you care. You're going to check in with them and you're going to check in with empathy so that they know that their pain's on your radar and that you care. Second thing that a leader of loss is going to do is to create opportunities for the team or the individual to express themselves, to talk about it. So not only do you care but you're drawing it out into the open so that they can feel understood and heard. And third, most importantly, you're going to keep them purposeful. You're gonna keep them in their most meaningful tasks, the things that matter to them, that give them a sense of purpose, but you're gonna provide a little breathing room around it, more slack, so that in the end, as a leader of loss, what you're creating for your teams and your individuals, is a space where they're cared about, can express themselves openly, and can continue to be relevant and purposeful with a little more time to think and process and cope.